had never heard about the CCAC before. I came to hear about it when we were down at Sick Kids with my son. Um, Jonah was born um, and was rushed immediately to Sick Kids. And we were told upon discharge that we would be in touch with the CCAC and that they would arrange nursing care for him to come home. The services that CCAC provides for Joan and his family are currently uh, shift nursing and uh, we also do the assessment for enhanced respite funding. coming in six nights a week. They arrive at 10.30 at night and they're here until 6.30 in the morning. They do regular assessments of Jonah. Um, they provide, uh, they go in every 15 minutes to check, at least every 15 minutes, and he is required to have a, uh, a G-tube feeding through the night as well as very frequent uh, suctioning. So the minimum suctioning that they do is again checking every 15 minutes and then if it's, it's uh, every hour uh, and in between if, if required. I visit the family on a, a minimal, minimally um, every six months. So we, we are required, or if there is a change in his, uh, in his status, if he's been to hospital, or if he's had a medical, a, a very uh, significant medical condition or illness, we would come in be before that. But as, uh, as a minimum, we are required to come in every six months. And we do a, a, a very thorough assessment. Um, and the reason for that is just to make sure that we are providing um, Jonah and his family with the appropriate level of service so that if it does change we would obviously change the service plan. The CCAC linked us with other supports in the community. Uh, one in particular is called the Hard to Serve Foundation um, and it assists with helping us to hire a nurse to help us out um, throughout uh, any time that we don't have nursing. So what we've done with that is uh, it's a yeah. It's a program that basically you have to put a, an application in, ask for a certain amount of money and then they'll deny or, or grant you the money and um, we hire Trent University nursing students to come in, gain experience with him and, and help us out. Um, sometimes we have them come through the day uh, in the summer if I want to, to provide care with my other son and get him out and do some activities with him away from Jonah. I make sure to, uh, to bring in a nurse that's qualified to look after him and, and one that we've trained, so the Hard to Serve helps us in that way. The challenges that Jonah and I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis are first and foremost is medical needs. They vary from day to day. If the weather outside is very wet, um, Jonah becomes very wet with his secretions coming from the trach and he has tr difficulty breathing. If the conditions are extremely cold outside, we can't go outside and play. Jonah has never built a snowman because it's too cold for him to go outside to play. Uh, if the weather's too hot, any plans that we have to go out for the day uh, are put on the back burner because Jonah finds the, the heat and humidity too high. Um, so it's basically constantly balancing the, the medical needs. Jonah receives bravery beads for being down in hospital at Sick Kids. He has a total of 803, I believe, right now. He's had 51 surgeries, which so there's white beads on there for uh, every surgery that he's had. The blue beads are uh, respiratory distress beads. Um, he's had IVs. Um, he even had a birthday down there. Um, he ended up having a, a blue spell and was rushed down to sick kids um, and they made sure to make his birthday absolutely special while he was down there and um, so he has beads from his birthday and he has um, beads pretty much of every color I think there's uh, there's only three sets of beads that he's never received while down in sick kids. As a primary caregiver to my son I find that the um, the CCC does is very supportive. Um, if there is um, an opportunity for them to help us, they will do it to the max capacity that they can. Just having somebody to be able to listen to you and have a, um, a shoulder to lean on is, is help for a parent when they're overstressed and overtired. Jonah started Sir James Whitney School in September of 2013. He previously was at a um, mainstream school and we decided that because of his deafness and the fact that uh, he, 
was not being able to access education in a mainstream school. We felt that Sir James Whitney would be the best option for him. He is flourishing down there. <clears throat> he speaks um, fluent ASL. He is in a classroom with five boys only and he gets a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention, which is what Jonah requires with Charge Syndrome. Um, and he has never really been an outspoken child before. He has always um, been an introvert and not really socializing. Since going to Sir James Whitney School, Jonah is now joining clubs for the first time. He joined dance club where he ruled. Um, he is an amazing dancer and he is uh, also on the floor hockey team and he plays with the big boys so um, they love him they think he's he's really cute uh, it's a scooter floor hockey so he's nice and close to the ground and he flies supposedly i haven't not had the opportunity to see it yet what i did have the opportunity to see was my son give a speech for the first time in front of the entire school he got up and did a poem called David's Snowman. It was written by uh, Debbie Sicoli, who is his ASL teacher. His hands were flying. I've never seen Jonah sign so fast. And his memory was just amazing. He even ad-libbed in a few spots. Um, he also, uh, when, when the speech was over, his teacher came up to me and said in all the years she's had children do that speech, no child has ever done the speech as well as Jonah has. The CCAC could help to improve our experience through, um, I, I think, better communication. Um, and by that I mean if my care coordinator has to go on holidays and um, I, I think having a phone call letting me know, one, that she's going on holidays, which she always does, but two, um, being able to have somebody on call that knows us, knows our family, so that I'm not having to re-explain the entire situation to somebody new. Um, and I think that that would be very beneficial, especially when you're a frazzled parent and you're just trying to, to get, you haven't had sleep for two nights and you're trying to find a nurse and you're trying to get advocating for yourself, getting bounced every day to a different coordinator is not ideal. Um, and the other thing too is when you move, you lose your coordinator that you've had for however many years, you can go into somebody else's district. And I find that very difficult as well because you've, lo you've lost the, the rapport that you have with that s certain coordinator. And now you're with somebody new and you have to start all over again and you have to build up that rapport and that trust and they have to get to know you and, and your child. And you know, it's, it's a little bit more difficult. The only thing I would like to add is that I think that the CCAC should promote more that they're willing to help families um, give additional support for the patient so that the families can support the other children in the household so that there is the opportunity for the other children to have a life outside of the medical care that their brother or sibling has um, been receiving. I think um, that being able to, to do more with your family in the end gives you more stability and more of a stress-free environment because you're not always having to do a balancing game. Myself as the, as the primary caregiver is um, the impression people get of you because you're constantly advocating, constantly figuring out what his needs are and trying to meet those needs. You become an advocate and not just a parent, but a parent advocate. And I mean, that comes with many stigmatas of you are, or stigmas of the fact that you are hard to work with, overbearing, over opinionated, um, and really you're just trying to, to give him the best care that you possibly can. And you can't do it if you have no sleep. And that's, that's the hard part is knowing that if I do fall asleep, he might not be here in the morning.